you, Brock, for helping us prepare for worship. And good morning. Welcome to you. Welcome to worship. A special welcome to those of you who are visiting with us this day. We are glad that we can worship together. Welcome. In the name of the Lord, whose blessing, as we'll find in Scripture today, whose blessing in Christ is with you through thick and thin, I say good morning and welcome. A few announcements for you as we begin worship. Last week, our 10th graders met in preparation for confirmation on Reformation Day, and this week, today, this morning after our uh, 10.30 service, our 9th graders will meet for preparation for their year of mentorship. I invite you to keep them and all of our confirmation students in your prayers as our congregation supports them in the catechism and in the learning of scripture. We appreciate all the ways that you do this, that we do this together. Also today at 3 p.m., the Augsburg Centennial Singers will be presenting a concert here at Bethel, and you are invited to attend and enjoy this music. Today at 3 p.m., and we will hear as a special treat from a couple of the quartets from this choir as part of our worship service this morning. Now our spotlight. Bethel members made 265 Lutheran World Relief backpacks. The quilters and other volunteers filled them with school supplies donated by members and purchased with Thrivent Action Team funds. And there's a great photo of some of that work being done. Also, Lift, the new women's Bible study, debuted with 25 attendees the first night. And hundreds have already made reservations for the October 6th, 150th anniversary dinner and celebration. Join the crowd. There is room for hundreds more. We'd love to receive your RSVP today or soon. With that, I'd like to say one more time, good morning and welcome to worship. We are called to worship by the Courier Quartet. Oh, 
you. I invite you to stand as you are able. Some of you with more grace than myself. As we confess our sins and hear God's word of forgiveness, which, graceful or not, makes us perfect in Christ. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, the strength of our ancestors, the host of this day, the builder of the city that is to come. Amen. If we have died with Christ, we will also live with Christ. Let us confess our sin to the one who is faithful. God, our helper, we confess the many ways we have failed to live as your disciples. We have not finished what we began. We have feasted with friends but ignored strangers. We have been captivated by our possessions. Lift our burdens, gracious God. Refresh our hearts. Forgive our sin. Raise us to the new life you have chosen for us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. There is rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. Put your trust in these promises. God will never leave you or forsake you. You who were lost have been found. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. God of presence, you remained fully with Joseph when he sat long years in a prison for a wrong he did not commit. Help us to see that you are always with us so that we might live faithfully in your world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Genesis, read responsibly. Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, 
the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight, and commanded him. He made him overseer of his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. From that, from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessings of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there, he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was a handsome and good looking, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look with me here. My master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled out and ran outside. And when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home. And then she told him the same story, saying, The, ser the Hebrew servant whom you brought among us came in to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined, and he remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him his steadfast love. He gave him favor in his sight. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisoners who were in prison, and whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care. Because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made prosper. Word of God, word of life. Children are welcome for the children's word. such a small part of the Joseph story which is so big in the Bible so that you can hear just a little bit more of the story we have a three-minute video for you to watch and for them to watch as well because it will tell us more of the story if you can't see the screens real well just come down and sit in chairs let's go ahead and play about Joseph things were going great for Joseph right over there until one day, 
Potiphar's wife tried to trick him. When her tricks didn't work, she told lies about Joseph. And Potiphar believed her. God! Potiphar threw Joseph into jail. Poor Joseph. His brothers sold him. A lady lied about him. And he was thrown into jail. It wasn't fair. But God had a plan for Joseph. I dreamed I saw a vine. One day, another prisoner told Joseph about a dream he'd had. Joseph listened carefully, and God showed him what the man's dream meant. In three days, you will be working for the king of Egypt, like you did before being put in prison. Ah. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Another prisoner dreamed he had three baskets of bread that he had baked for the king. In his dream, the birds kept eating up all the bread. Joseph didn't have very good news about the dream. In three days, you will die. Joseph told the truth. The man did die. One night, the king of Egypt dreamed that seven skinny cows came from the river and ate up seven fat cows. No one could figure out what the dream meant. Your Highness, call for Joseph, said the first man who had told Joseph his dream in prison. And God showed Joseph what the king's dream meant. There will be seven years with lots of food. Yeah! Yeah! Followed by seven years with almost no food. The king knew that Joseph was right. And through the smarts that God gave Joseph, he was able to save an entire generation. People who would have been hungry, but he helped save food. He suffered. You're going to hear more about that in the sermon. But God blessed him greatly. Thanks for coming up and worshiping that God. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, Jesus said, Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil falsely against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you the Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Johnny was an active teenager who loved riding horses and swimming. One day she dove into a lake, unaware of how shallow the lake was. She broke her neck, paralyzing herself from the shoulders down. 
She lay in a hospital bed uh, with suicidal depression, discouraged, depressed. She grew tired of the well-intentioned platitudes from those who visited her hospital bed, including those who would quote the Bible as to why this had happened to her. She wondered how God could allow this to happen to her. Was there a good and loving God? Eventually, this despair gave way to a search for truth and meaning. She enlisted a friend named Steve on this journey with her, a journey that began with a renewed walk in the faith beginning with the cross of Jesus Christ. To this day, Johnny doesn't have an answer for her suffering that remains a mystery to her. But God was able to unlock different gifts in her, including endurance, self-control, the ability to paint with her mouth. She became a superb painter and a talented writer. At the age of 25, Bob had a construction accident that paralyzed him from the waist down. Early visitors to his hospital room tried to convince him that God would do a miracle and he would walk out of that hospital on his own someday. But Bob knew that was not going to happen. He too wondered how God could let that happen to him as a faithful 25-year-old man with a family. Eventually, Bob began to work on his healing, not so much in his legs, he still is in a wheelchair, but he knew there must be a greater purpose in his life, having survived an accident that would have killed most other people. He replaced bitterness with hope. Now, you probably know Bob Bardwell. You maybe even shook his hand. The founder of the, of the Ironwood Springs Christian Ranch just outside of Stewartville, a, a champion wheelchair racer, one whose ranch is nationally known for serving people with all kinds of disabilities. You maybe know more of Johnny than you think one who was very popular some years ago on the speaking tour. Her name is Johnny Erickson, author of 17 books, a talented vocalist, one who is an advocate for people who are disabled around the globe. To look at Johnny and Bob today, you would say that they have prospered in this life. Please do not hear me say that they welcomed the accidents that took away many of their abilities. They, they did not want those things to happen. They would rather be able to walk and run like most of us are able to do. But somehow God was able to unlock new gifts in their lives, even with the disabilities that they overcame. God blessed their paths in ways they couldn't have possibly imagined when they were children, or surely not when they were young adults dealing with their huge disabilities. Today in our long Genesis story, we meet a man who had to overcome many obstacles in his life and who yet prospered in the Lord. We have read just this small, small slice of Joseph's life. If you were to have read his entire many-chapter history in Genesis, you would have seen so many obstacles that were set before him, from hating brothers who hated him to the point of wanting to put him to death, those brothers who finally relented and at least just sold him off into slavery, unjust accusations, unjust time in prison. I, Joseph was in trouble so much, and yet he prospered. Four times in that reading, we had lips put on, uh, words put on your lips as the congregation. If you noticed, every time you were reporting how the Lord was with Joseph and how Joseph prospered through the Lord. 
It was an odd route to prosperity from hating brothers to slavery to, to being imprisoned. Joseph did not welcome these things, and yet he prospered in spite of the fact that he was hated and sold into slavery. He rose to become the overseer of Potiphar's house, an officer of Pharaoh. In spite of being imprisoned, he was able to use his gifts to help others and care for all the prisoners, it is reported. In spite of being a foreigner, he was able to rise to become the second most powerful man in Egypt, only behind Pharaoh himself. Oh, he prospered. But he surely did not welcome the sufferings, the obstacles in his life. Who is it that welcomes suffering? Or a different question, who is it that is spared suffering in our life? Of course, the answer is no one. Read the Bible all you like. You're not going to find one person who was born with a golden spoon in his or her mouth, who lives life as if in a bed of roses. Every biblical character has a weakness or suffers in some way. Oh, wait a minute. That sounds a lot like us. <laughs> really, we, we are no different than biblical characters. We are no different from Joseph, whose pride gets him in trouble with his brothers. We are no different from the biblical Ruth, who loses a wife, uh, loses a husband far too early in her life. We are like Moses, who is pressed in on every side and wonders how he can deal with all the problems that visit him. Does that sound like your life? Family squabbles? Losing people you love, more problems than there are answers. Well, welcome to the human race. In spite of all of that, there is a God who wills prosperity for his children. I am not saying that everyone is going to rise to become the vice president of Egypt or that everyone will have a a retirement home in Arizona or Florida with a million dollars in the bank. What I am saying is that there is a God who is genuinely generous and wants the best, wants prosperity for every one of His children, and it's going to look different for every one of us. Now, truly, some of those faithful children will rise to power. There are plenty of faithful people who have served as heads of state or in circles close to presidents, governors, kings, and queens. Truly, there are some who are faithful who will amass great sums of money, and they will faithfully use that money to assist in caring for God's creation and God's people. But prosperity may also look like the Apostle Paul, struck down, blind, and confused, and yet infused with a grace that enables him to travel, begin churches, and write words that we still read today. Paul spent a lot more time in jails than in mansions. He never seemed to have enough. He even sewed tents together in order to make ends meet. And yet, he had it all. He prospered in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Prosperity may look like the poor widow Ruth who lost her husband so early and proclaimed her loyalty to a mother-in-law. Ruth, who went out into the fields after they had been harvested in order to pick up just the little bits of grain that were left over so that she and her mother-in-law would not starve to death. She found prosperity and security in a new relationship. Prosperity may look like all of those faithful people who die in the faith at Bethel. Truly, 
most or all of these have had enough in life. They have had even more than enough prospering in the way of love and in family, rich in relationship with God and with others. Prosperity may look like the addict who looks for a new foundation in life, including a foundation built on that higher power whom we call God. Prosperity may be that mother who, after a hectic day, kids finally in bed, sits down for just a moment of respite, a moment, and thinks about all that God has given to her. No matter your circumstance, there is a God who intends prosperity for you. It may not be a bank account with lots of zeros, but it surely will be a prosperity in faith, a prosperity in using your gifts to serve others. As the Lord was with Joseph, may the Lord be with you, and may the Lord prosper you in all that you do. Amen. Please rise and sing. confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us pray for the needs in our lives, for the needs of our neighbors, and for God's blessing in the work in sharing the gospel of Christ. Lord God, your favor, Joseph, through the ups and downs of his life, so too do you favor us in Jesus Christ. Grant us faith to believe your promises so that we can be freed to enter into the work of serving those around us 
and sharing your good word with the world. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, your word today reminds us how important marriage and the family are to you and for our own sakes. Yet we still struggle here. Bless and protect our relationships and our friendships with honesty and with grace. May our children and families grow in trust of your word and be kept safe always. Lord, in your mercy. Even when life looks hopeless, you restore hope in Christ. Bring your healing to those who need it this day, including Gabby Brown, Henry Whitmer, Gretchen Hill, and Don Lindgren. May they be buoyed by your healing hand, Lord, in your mercy. We will lift up to you those struggling with loss in their lives. And we pray especially for Cheryl Stenson and her family in the death of her mother and for Palmer Borgen and family in the death of Audrey. Show us how to care for each other and pray for each other in our losses, knowing that you have defeated death already through Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> These prayers we give to you at the direction of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we share those gifts that God has already placed in our lives, and we will watch our second stewardship video during the offering. For 150 years, Bethel Lutheran Church has been blessed to be a congregation centered in the grace and love of Jesus Christ. This year's annual stewardship campaign is asking for you to commit with a financial pledge toward 2020 as we look to the past with gratitude and to the future with hope. Bethel's mission statement is, we, the Bethel congregation called by God, commit ourselves to proclaim the gospel, to prepare our members for outreach and service, and to minister to human need. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says, a new command I give you, love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you love one another. How do your financial gifts to Bethel's annual fund support our commitment to prepare our members for outreach and service? Your giving supports weekly outreach ministries like Coffee and a Prayer. For nine years, Bethel's Coffee and a Prayer has become a signature outreach effort in Rochester. Each Wednesday from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., a faithful corps of volunteers have been standing in Bethel's main parking lot entrance, waving to cars as they travel 3rd Avenue Southeast. Every week, rain or shine, bitter cold or driving snow, a team of three volunteers and one of Bethel's pastors stand with a mobile cart stocked with coffee, hot chocolate, and water bottles and are ready to provide a prayer and free coffee hospitality to anyone who stops in. I'm Jeff Cochran, one of those volunteers. It is a highlight for me to serve each week as a visible reminder that Bethel cares about the community. When we wave at the cars that pass by or talk and pray with those who stop in and give them a cup of coffee, we want them to know that Jesus is with them. Jesus will meet you wherever you are at on the journey of life with grace and peace. Every week we have someone who stops in and says, I see you here every week, but today I really needed a prayer and so I wanted to stop. Thank you, Bethel Lutheran, for this unique opportunity to serve and reach out with the love of Jesus. Since 2011, the Rochester Mission Trip has set aside a few days in August to serve as a local mission trip. While Bethel offers mission and service trips to places like Puerto Rico and Tanzania, the Rochester Mission Trip gives members and friends an opportunity to try out serving at and for local agencies in our own community that are doing wonderful work to help others. This year's Rochester Mission Trip theme verse was from 1 John chapter 4. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Serving as the hands and feet of Jesus' love, this intergenerational service opportunity encourages people to use their gifts of artistry as well as hands-on work projects. I'm Melissa Lamb and along with coordinator Sherry Engel, this year's Rochester Mission Trip gathered over two days to send groups out to various places in Rochester and do work projects at Bethel that we delivered to organizations. Prayer always centered us before we served at places, including Habitat for Humanities Restore, where donated items are restocked in a store for sale to the community. All proceeds from Restore, from nuts and bolts to kitchen sinks, 
go to support efforts in our region for providing homes for individuals and families. Channel One, the region's foremost outpost of helping to feed the hungry. Leading residents of Samaritan Bethany in a campfire sing-along and making them s'mores. Painting bowls at Color Me Mine for an upcoming fundraiser for Channel One. Partnering with Family Service Rochester for in-home service projects and yard work. Filling care packages for Operation Hometown Gratitude that sends these to our military service people serving around the world. Creating fleece toys and blankets for animals at Paws and Claws. Baking cookies for guests of the Gift of Life Transplant House. And personalizing breakfast to-go bags for Ronald McDonald House. And so much more. Returning at the end of each of the eight sessions offered on the Rochester Mission Trip, there were smiles and conversations about the joy that is found when we have an opportunity to serve. Many Bethel members and friends hope to do more of this kind of volunteering in the future. Thank you for your support of the Rochester Mission Trip. And as one who serves on Bethel's social missions team, thank you for the multitude of ways this congregation serves. At Bethel Lutheran Church, we are committed to outreach and service. Your financial gifts positively support the loving work we are called to do together in Jesus' name. Let us pray. God, our provider, we bring nothing into this world and we can take nothing out of it except the gifts that you have first given us, which we offer for your work through the ministries of Bethel. We give thanks as well for new life and we give thanks especially for those who are born recently in our congregation, including Owen David Gross, born to Eric and Kayla. We pray your blessing on them. In the name of Christ, amen. I invite you to join me as we pray together. The prayer that Jesus taught his disciples and the prayer that continue, Jesus continues to teach us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. be seated. Oh 
with purpose. Give us words to sing. Fill us with the boldness to serve the King of Kings. No more shameful silence. Spirit overflow with words of living water. Thank you, Courier Quartet. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able to receive our blessing this day. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you with grace, mercy, and peace. Amen. Christ loved us.